World War III Survival Guide for Beginners Your Paranoia Starter Kit News says imminent threat. Your government says stay calm. And your neighbor? He's already building a bunker out of shopping carts. Time to prep like the world's ending, because it probably is. Before we go further, hit that subscribe button if you don't want to end up like Dave. <clears throat> Step 1. Scavenge like a trash panda. Water. Hoard every container you can find. Yes, even that questionable collector's edition soda bottle. Food, canned goods, or learn to love the taste of expired MREs. Hint, you won't. Weapons, that for display only katana? Well, it's about to get very functional. If you're not sweating, you're not trying. If you get arrested, congrats, free shelter. Step two, build a bunker or close enough. Reinforce walls. Stack books. Finally, a use for your ex's poetry. Block windows. Use boards, mattresses, or just pile up all your bad financial decisions. <laughs> Concrete stops bullets. Duct tape stops sanity. Both are vital. Step 3. Learn the new currency. Batteries equal gold. Power your radio. Or trade for a kidney. Ammo equal love language. Nothing says stay back like a loaded 45. Toilet paper equal diplomatic tool. Even warlords need to wipe. No government? No problem. Just remember, in World War III, the only safe place is the one you build, out of paranoia and spite. How to make gasoline when the last pump stopped working three murders ago. Step one, find anything that ever grew in dirt, potatoes, corn, that weird squash in your neighbor's abandoned garden. If it rots, we can use it. Mash it into sludge with a crowbar, or your ex's favorite vinyl record. Add water from that questionable puddle. Congratulations, you've made prison wine for your engine. Cook your swamp juice with the contraption you made with the vintage pressure cooker from the abandoned meth lab. Yes, that contraption you made with a car radiator, barrel of a gun, and literal garbage pipes. The drips? Well, that's your freedom juice. Final test, pour it in your tank. If the engine starts, you're a wasteland mechanic. If it explodes, well, at least you won't need gas where you're going. Survival tip, the apocalypse hates a quiet engine. How to make gunpowder when the world's burning and your enemies aren't. Bullets are currency, guns are gods. And you, you're holding a spoon. It's time to cook up some boom boom. <clears throat> Step one, scavenge like a warlord. Things you need, saltpeter, crusty white powder from caves, toilets, or that suspicious fertilizer in grandma's shed. Charcoal, burn last night's dinner or your ex's love letters. <laughs> Sulfur, raid the pharmacy or hell or just lick a match head. If your nose hairs burn off, congrats, it's working. If your eyebrows vanish, well, fashion statement. Step two, mix like a mad scientist. Grind saltpeter, use teeth if you're extra desperate. Add charcoal, blacker than your survival odds, Toss in sulfur, the devil's dandruff. Pound it. 75% boom, 15% flash, 10% why is my hand gone? The perfect ratio for negotiations. Step three, test your fate. If it fires, well, you're Oppenheimer's trashy cousin. If it fizzles, at least you can throw it and really disappoint someone. No NRA? No problem, just remember, in the wasteland, diplomacy is just gunpowder with better PR. How to make a battery when the grid is dead and your flashlight's a paperweight. No power, no stores. And the last fresh battery? It's in a Raider's pacemaker. Time to MacGyver some juice. Step one, scavenge like a rat. Stuff you need, copper. Strip wires from old electronics. Toasters, power cords, even that broken radio. Zinc, soda cans, peel the lining, that's your ticket. Or gut a flashlight battery. Careful, it's spicy. Acid, lemon juice, vinegar, or that suspicious water in the basement. Container, mason jar, glass bottle, or a hollowed out cactus, if you're extra desperate. Step two, build the battery. Sand the metals, use concrete, a rock, or your last shred of patience. Copper on one side, zinc on the other. Don't let them touch, unless you want a weak battery. Connect wires to each metal, Wrap them tight or chew the ends for better contact. Submerge in acid. 
the liquid, not your life choices. Seal it. Duct tape fixes all. Even radiation burns. Zinc dissolves in acid, copper soaks up electrons. Connect wires to both metals, and boom, juice flows like raider tears. If your hands tingle, congrats, it's working. If they melt, well, you needed new fingerprints anyway. Step three, test your luck. If it works, you're Edison 2.0. If it fails, well, at least the acid can dissolve evidence. No Duracell, no problem. Just remember, in the apocalypse, sparks mean hope or immolation. How to make clean water when the world's a toxic dumpster fire. Time to science the hell out of hydration. Method one, solar still, dirt cheap. Dig a hole, size, grave for your dignity. Add wet stuff, grass, pee, yours hopefully, or that suspicious moss. Cover with plastic, trash bags, old ads, featuring dead celebrities. Stone in the center, condensation drips into your soup can. Sun heats the sludge. Water evaporates, leaves toxins behind. Condenses on plastic. Boom, H2O, even a cat wouldn't refuse. Congrats, you've officially drunk pee. Method two, DIY filter, trash edition. Make a gutted water bottle filled with layers. Charcoal, burnt dinner leftovers. Sand, beach, more like toxic waste shoreline. Gravel, crushed dreams and concrete. Cloth, RIP your favorite band tea. Charcoal traps chemicals. Sand catches sludge. Gravel stops the big stuff. Is it perfect? No. Is it better than dysentery? Cheers. How to make rubbing alcohol when the pharmacy's looted and your wounds are growing friends. Hospitals are dust. That cut on your arm. It's writing its will. Time to distill some liquid hope or at least liquid that burns enough to sterilize a fork wound. Before we go further, hit that subscribe button if you don't want to end up like Dave. <clears throat> Step one, scavenge like a fermented rat. Sugar source, rotten fruit, that organic honey from 2018 or melted gummy bears, yeast, bread crusts, the weird film on your socks, or just spit in it and pray. Container, glass jug, hollowed out coconut, or your neighbor's fancy decanter. They're dead anyway. If it smells like a brewery, congrats. If it smells like death's laundry, maybe don't drink it. Step two, ferment like a mad scientist. Mash your sugar sludge. Use a baseball bat, rock, or pure rage. Add yeast, the funkier the better. Let it rot. Two days if you're lucky, two hours if the raiders are coming. Yeast eats sugar, pisses alcohol nature's most disgusting miracle. Step three, distill your regrets. Find a metal pot, pressure cooker, or that one neighbor's stolen soup can. Drill hole in lid, use a nail if you're truly desperate. Two, find copper tubing. Gut your fridge coils, aluminum cans, smash flat and roll, or a hollowed out shotgun barrel. Attach seal to boiling chamber with clay mud chewed gum. Three, cooling chamber, find bucket, trash can, or your last intact shoe, or run tube through cold water. Swamp water works, kind of. Boil the swill. That distinct bouquet means it's working or killing you. Collect the steam through a tube, a hose, or your neighbor's stolen CPAP machine. Cool it down. Ice? Hey, use wet rags or just cry on it. Light a drop on fire. If it burns blue, victory. If it burns down your shack, well, warmth is warmth. Hit subscribe or risk being unprepared when the apocalypse comes. And trust me, Steve the Warlord will invade your safe space.